All right, find the exact value of each of the six trig functions for the angle negative 2 pi over 3. So uh, it's a negative angle, and it's uh, it's not in quadrant one, is it? So let's find the reference number, and we're gonna we're gonna take that uh, instead, and then we'll add negative signs where appropriate. So, sorry, I realized now I'm drawing outside of your viewing window. So this is the unit circle. And negative 2 pi over 3 is right here. Right. If we split the bottom half into thirds, we go two of them around, which leaves a third of it left. So that's the reference number. So now we're gonna we're gonna say, hey, let's take the reference number pi over three and just take all of these. So what is sine of pi over 3? Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Cosine is 1 half. Tangent is the ratio of sine divided by cosine, which is root 3. And then these are just the reciprocals. This is 2 root 3 over 3. This is 2. This is root 3 over 3. Now we've worked out how to rationalize denominators before. That's all I did for here and here. And now we just need to add negative signs. We're in quadrant three, right? That angle was in quadrant three, which means the sine and the cosine are negative and the tangent is positive, which means that the cosecant and the secant are negative and the cotangent is positive. Okay? So uh, what work would I like to see? Well, it's the work of, hey, where is this angle? What's the reference angle? and then everything's negative. Right? Literally just saying those words. Sine and cosine are negative, tangent's positive. And then all you need to write is something like this, right after showing that. Alrighty. Uh, question 31, 32, and 33 is the last one. So, and that's a harder one, so maybe I'll, no, I'll, I'll see how long this takes and I'll throw them into a, a video if I need to. Which of the following trig equations is not true? Okay. Sine is an odd function, which means if you have sine of negative x, it's equal to negative sine of x, so it's not this one. That one is true. Okay, cosine is even, which means when you plug in a negative of something, you get the positive of the cosine of the positive of that something. Cosine of negative x equals cosine of x. It's even, so it doesn't matter if you plug in negative or positive of your angle, you get the same thing out. So clearly we found the incorrect one already. Tangent is odd as well, which is exactly what is written. So C is true, so B is, is not. Which of the following trig equations is not true for 32? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Right, just looking at these, um, they all look you know, kind of kind of good. Um, these are all going to be plays on the Pythagorean identity, which is going to give away the solution here. Sine squared of an angle plus cosine squared of an angle. That's always equal to 1. That's the well-known Pythagorean identity. And uh, you'll notice that C is, is it's got a sine switched. So this is definitely not true. Um, if you divide everything here by sine of x, sine squared of x, you're going to get 1 plus cotangent squared of x equals cosecant squared of x. So that's dividing the Pythagorean by sine squared of x. And you'll notice that's the same as this one cosecant squared minus cotangent squared equals 1. If you divide everything by cosine squared, you're going to get tangent squared of x plus 1 equals secant squared of x. And if you subtract over the tangent squared, you get that. 
So those are true. Those are Pythagorean identities. And this one is not. So there you have it. Alrighty, I'm just going to throw this last problem into this video as well. So evaluate tangent a sine inverse of 3 fifths. So this, the hint is to sketch an appropriate right triangle. So I'm going to draw a <clears throat> triangle in standard form, which means one of the legs is on the uh, x-axis here. And I'll call this my angle. OK, so what is sine inverse? Sine inverse tells you the angle which has a ratio of 3 fifths. So if I were to take the sine of this angle, that will give me 3 fifths. Right? This is true if and only if sine inverse of 3 fifths equals theta. But sine in a right triangle is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Okay. So here we have almost an entire triangle uh, solved in terms of legs. We're just missing one leg. So what we need to do is we need to find that leg because the tangent theta, which is the same as the tangent of the sine inverse of 3 fifths, that's the angle, remember, uh, that's going to equal the opposite side over the adjacent side, which we do not know. So we just got to find that. And that's just going to boil down to the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus 3 squared equals 5 squared. So a squared is equal to 25 minus 9, which is 16, which means that a equals plus or minus, right, plus or minus 4. Okay, <clears throat> so now the question is, which one is it? Um, here we go. So here's an, another triangle. Um, in standard form. Here's my angle theta. It's a right angle. Uh, if A is 4, our triangle looks like this. If A is negative 4, our triangle looks like this because we're imagining this is the origin which means this also needs to be a negative 3, right? OK, now think about, briefly, what's wrong with this, with this new triangle that we've just, I've just drawn in. There's a couple ways to identify it. First way is to notice we didn't have a, a 3 that was negative, did we? We had a positive 3 over 5. If we take the sine of this angle theta, we're going to get negative 3 fifths. So it's not that one, it's not this triangle. Okay, the other way to sort of see this is to think about where this angle lies. What is the domain and range of sine inverse? The domain is any value between negative 1 and 1, and sine. has what for its um, its range? What part of the graph do we remember keeping? We wanted to make sure we, we had an inverse. So, so we ended up taking from negative pi over 2 up to pi over 2. So 
this angle is somewhere in quadrant four or quadrant one. It can't be in quadrant three. Okay, so A is positive four, which means tangent of that angle is three fourths. And you're done. Okay, that's it for all of the solutions for the final exam. Uh, overall, that, that took me in making the movies exactly. Uh, it's 10.08 now. I started doing this at uh, 8.28. So that's, that's exactly an hour and 40 minutes to make these videos. Uh, the final that I've written is the same length. It's 33 questions. Uh, there's way more true-false questions, um, and those, those tend to go a little faster. Uh, than these problems that you're working out. Uh, so 33 minus the true-false questions. No, there's 16 true-false questions, and so it's um, what's that 17? 17 short answer questions. On this one, there were an awful lot more. So one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11. There were 11 um, multiple choice questions. And true, false, I think they're a little faster than even multiple choice. So there's more of the shorter questions uh, on the test. So it could go a little faster. Plus, I'm, I'm explaining everything out here. and. Uh, in great detail and solving them in multiple ways sometimes. So, you know, I would expect fast students could take this test in about an hour. Uh, and I think two hours would be pretty generous. Um, but again, you've got two and a half hours to take the test. Uh, remember that, um, remember that I'm asking you to show quite a lot of your work, right? I'm asking you to show, um, as much work as you can, okay. Uh, if you if if there's steps where I'm left thinking, how in the world did you go from here to there? That's not good. So uh, that's that's where you you'd miss a point. But if it's pretty obvious, you know, with what work you've shown, how you got from A to B, then you don't need to worry about this, okay. Um, yeah. So just. As you're solving problems, just write down what you're thinking, write down what you're doing, and you'll be fine. Uh, I know it's going to take a little bit longer, but I want to know that you can do it. Okay, so if you have any questions, do just shoot me an email, and I'll get back to you soon. Um, otherwise, good luck studying, and I will. I hope you have a great summer, uh, and I'll be in touch with you if you if you if I need anything from you. And please don't hesitate to get in touch with me if you need any, need anything from me. Um, so I'll talk to you if you need me. Okay? Until next time, you have a good one.